Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In case you're new here, my name is Kim. This is Core Union. I wanted to address um, a concern that came up with a client of mine, and I thought that it was a good example of how you don't want to actually conform to the old story or conform to your own fears, which were reflected back to you through the personification, maybe in some cases, of your person's fears. So this would, you know, there are many different collectives with this. There are some people that just experienced things that were just the perception of fear. Other people experienced the actual personification of things that happened that were their fear. And then there are other people who are just kind of experiencing that they're fearful that technically deep down, even though they say that they want to be in a relationship and they, in the 3D, there was the anxious avoidant style and the um, dismissive avoidant style attachment theories that were kind of displayed between you and your person. No matter what, this is all about you becoming completely secure and stable and trusting, feeling safe to be in a relationship, feeling safe to be loved. And then your person, all of the attachment styles, all of the old stories and things, all of that will handle itself. You don't have to be the one to figure it out. And the problem is you guys, um, and no blame or anything like this, because I know a lot of you guys are just awakening to this. But the thing is that it's not up to you to actually figure out how to make your person be trusting in you and be feeling safe and secure and being emotionally mature and all of that stuff. So it's a very common thing. It's not unique at all. So anyway, I'm just going to share this quick little tidbit that came up with one of my clients. And it's, again, it's, it's a quite, it's common. And I know that this won't be exactly what some of you guys experience, but I'm sure that you'll be able to figure out a way to kind of relate and apply it to your own thing. And then I want to talk a little bit about techniques um, at the end of the session. It's going to be, it has to be short and sweet because I'm getting ready to get on with the client and I love my new blouse. I'm just saying, I absolutely love it. Okay. So before I do get into this, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you love my content, if you want me to be your coach, email me a short description to Kim at coreunion.com. I will reply back with my next available session. You can do a 30 minute or a package, which just makes it more affordable. And that is what people end up doing. So you do whatever it is that you want to do. And also you don't need coaching. You can coach yourself, but if you want somebody to help guide you, I'm totally, I'm totally in for it. And I'm here. Okay. So this is what came up with um, my client recently. He he's he's doing an, an amazing job, and he had experienced basically what I described in the intro of this video that him and his person love each other very 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 much. It's an incredibly deep love, but they both were, it's almost like they were both mirroring. I mean, this is the experience that he experienced in his 3D, that they were both mirroring each other's fears. Like the, it's like they're very irresistible to each other. They love each other very much. And every time they would be uh, together, it's like heavenly. But then, you know, there's all these little stories and these hangups, they both get scared and then they both get triggered. And then they're, you know, they're kind of like all of this stuff is like they're bouncing off of each other and then boom, they end up separating. This is a very common thing. One of the things he said that comes up while he's doing his inner work and he's just living his life. So you guys know that, you're just doing your inner work and you're not focusing on you are, you have to focus on self-concept, self-love, all of the things that came up. You need to look at those things and mirror them just to see that this is stuff that is reflecting things that are active within me. Maybe they were dormant for years, but now they're active. So I need to look at them and I make need to make a new decision of who I am, who we are to each other, what we both feel for each other, what we both think about each other, when we think about each other. Like you have to get clear on these things. And this is where coaching can help, but it's not necessarily you, you can do it yourself. So he said, what ha what's happening is he keeps getting triggered by just living his life throughout the day because he'll he'll kind of he's watching as he's doing things and he's he's like one of those things that came up again this is a common thing it's not like it's not like it's it's really not unique at all but he loves listening to music in the shower 
He is so incredibly devoted to his person. He's like, he's like me, basically. He doesn't even allow himself to have a thought. He is so faithful and devoted that he won't even look. He's got like, he's, he's laser focused on the end of them being happy together and a marriage together. This is why I relate. I relate to him so much. I do relate to a lot of my clients, but but it's like, I don't know. It's like we both have the same way of kind of that that faith and devotion and that loyalty. That's one of the things that Hana um, really loves about me is is my my loyalty that he knows that it doesn't matter what we go through, that my love isn't going anywhere. So anyway, he got triggered because he loves, he's like, no matter what I, part of his story is no matter what I ever say and do, my person always ends up feeling suspicious about me and not trusting me. And if I don't respond quick enough, and if I ring my phone in the other room, she's suspicious of that. She thinks it's somehow, some way, because, you know, she, she, he met her and there was a story about past betrayal with her. So she's very scared of trusting somebody. So that's his story that he needs to focus on. Now, how she will end up trusting is through him learning how to do the inner work and and all the stuff that I always talk about on the videos. But so I want to talk specifically about this one thing that he keeps experiencing and he keeps getting triggered with it. He said that, um, so between the time of our sessions, he loves to bring his phone with him in the shower. I do too. He loves to listen to music. I do too. And he also has his own business. I do too. And so he uses his phone a lot, but this was a trigger for his person. And he said, so now every time I, because I'm imagining living from the end of being together, being married together, and every time I go to bring my phone with me, if I go in the bathroom or if I go for a walk and I imagine my person that we're living together, I, I keep imagining that this is going to trigger her. So I need to leave my phone where she can always see it, which means I have to, I have to change that I can't enjoy listening to music in the shower anymore, or I can't take my phone with me, or I can't be checking my emails because, you know, my baby's constantly going to get triggered. And I said, absolutely not. You cannot do that. You have to see the end. And the end is not you guys still being insecure with each other. The end is not you still being anxious avoidant and her being uh, dismissive avoidant. The In the end, you guys have gotten through that, whether it end up being through the middle that you guys, who knows, you just end up one day, you guys are just ready for each other and you love each other because you've been doing the inner work so much. And that, you know, during the time while you were apart, maybe she talked to somebody, maybe she watched something, maybe she went through some sort of a, course on YouTube. Maybe she just had an awakening. Maybe she just suddenly realized, damn, I like pushed him away and he was really loving me and he was really devoted to me and he treated me like gold. And the reason why I was so afraid was just because I never had that before, but now I'm completely trusting. She could just literally have an awakening or maybe you guys end up going to counseling together, or maybe while you're apart, she's doing some form of something. This is the part that's none of your business. But the point is you are not you don't want your end to conform to your old story about yourself, you, about your person and about the relationship. So no, you would not conform to fear. If you are, because I get this, if you are a hundred percent, you are so incredibly devoted, stable, 100% faithful, even in your thoughts to your person, they're it, they're the only one for you. And you also have to, by the way, while you do this, they feel all of the same for you too. You can never just keep, oh, I love them so much. They're everything to me. I'm everything. Um, but you have to always see they feel exactly the same. From now on, you need to do that from now on. You need to take everything off the pedestal. You need to see that the love, I'm sorry, I need to adjust this. I'm not editing that, that's staying in. <laughs> you need to see that the love is equal, immense, pure, sacred and that they feel everything that you feel for them, regardless of what was said, regardless of the conditions of the 3D, regardless if there are uh, uh, anxious avoidance styles, labels of mental health issues or addictions or whatever. And this is out for, I, I just said that for a few of my clients. So I know you guys got that when I said that, that you received it. So comment down below that you received it. But anyway, 
No, you cannot conform to your oaths or your fears. The end is that you guys are secure with each other. You love each other. You trust each other. You have a beautiful, easy, loving, harmonious, harmonious relationship. Yes, the two of you guys will still have insecurities. Yes, you don't have to be fully healed. Yes, you guys are there for each other. You're constantly supporting each other. You're loving each other through, but you just simply are not blaming each other anymore for the triggers and the baggage of your past. Okay. And this all comes from you. If you're the one that's in the position that you're in, that your person, you, you are experiencing the illusion of the separation or the illusion of whatever that you just not in the relationship that you want, it is your job and your one and only job to get clear on the end by mirroring the triggers, seeing what they said to you, cre recreating yourself, recreating your person, recreating the relationship, the dynamic between the two of you guys, trusting and knowing that that end exists or you simply could not even want it or desiring it. And then you have blind faith. Okay. And that's the part that a lot of you guys are are still learning how to do, I'm going to say. You have to learn how to have blind faith. Trust and know that the end exists. All potential ends exist right now. You are going to select over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, which end that you actually want, which is your highest best, and then allow it to happen and enjoy your life. You have to be enjoying your life, being the best you and only seeing the best them. If you are constantly ruminating on the old, old, old story, then you're going to have to keep doing some work. I love you so much. I can help you. If you need me, reach out. Please do affirm down below that you know that your desired end exists. It's already done and you are in 100% faith. I do know and I declare that you guys have shifted because of this video. I love you so much. Reach out to me if you need me. Have an amazing day. Bye. Nothing can come, nothing can come, nothing can come between us.